Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new what up today I'm here to bring you guys a bit of a perfume haul and review I recently got in five new perfumes to my collection and I've been wearing some of them I've been testing some of them some of them are still kind of like my first impressions of the perfume because I may have worn it on my hand or my arm but I didn't give it like an all-day wear test or I didn't wear it you know out and about to really see the performance and everything so I kind of want to give you guys my thoughts on these perfumes that I just bought into my collection before I forget about them and put them away so if you guys are interested in seeing the perfumes that i just got and hearing my thoughts on them then just keep on watching okay so which one am i going to start with i guess i'm going to start with the one that i've actually like worn and put to the test so that would be my britney spears rainbow fantasy perfume now this perfume has been eluding me i've wanted this one for the longest time but it's so hard to find i don't know why a lot of the discount sites don't have this one anymore i mean i know that a lot of her perfumes have been discontinued obviously but the discount sites are pretty good about having discounted or discontinued fragrances for discounted prices so i'm not sure about this one but if you can get your hands on this one i would definitely recommend it this one is just so light and refreshing but then it has that really cotton candy ambery sweet dry down so that's why i like this one so this one starts out with like cloudberry and finger lime and pear like it's really refreshing and like i said it's really bright in the opening when you first spray it it kind of smells aquatic as well like it has this like watery aromatic feature to it but then like I said, when you get it on the skin, it dries down and it has this super sugary cotton candy, almost resin. Am I saying that right? Almost like resin amber type of smell because I remember I was wearing this and I had been wearing it for a few hours and then my boyfriend smelled this on me and I didn't tell him that it was a new perfume. I didn't tell him that I was wearing something new, but he was like, you smell like the first time we started hanging out. And when I thought about that, we first started hanging out during the winter time, which means that I was wearing a lot of my coconut cream pie and guess by Marciano, a lot of my Jessica Simpson fancy, those type of scents. So I was like, it has to be that sweetness in the dry down that's reminding him of one of those scents because I was not wearing this or anything like this during the winter time. I was definitely wearing a lot of fancy and guess by Marciano. So I guess like that really sweet dry down reminds him of those like really sweet scents and I can definitely see where he's coming from with this one this is a perfume that goes through a really big transition and I love that about it so it goes from that really bright and fruity opening like almost watery aquatic opening to like this really sweet sugary sponge sugar caramel type of dry down and it's amazing to me I think this perfume is stunning definitely one that I would recommend but unfortunately like I said it's so hard to find but if you guys can't find this I definitely think it's worth adding to the collection okay so the next one is going to be one that i was really really excited about like this is one that i was waiting to come from ebay this is another one that has been discontinued and it's pretty hard to find because like no place really carries this i actually found this from a perfume store on ebay everything checks out it's authentic and all of that good stuff but this is jimmy choo stars so this is basically a flanker of the original Jimmy Choo. They also have one that's very similar to this in the Rose Gold edition, but that one has also been discontinued and is really, really hard to find. So I was so excited about this one because of the scent notes. The scent notes for this one just was like, oh yeah, snatched it up. I gotta have it, I gotta find it. And so I was able to find it on eBay. So this one starts out with candy orange, orange. It has some toffee, some patchouli, some orchid and sandalwood. I was just like, this has to be my perfect perfume. It has to. It's not my perfect perfume, but this is so good, especially the dry down. I will say though, y'all know Fever is definitely one of my top five perfumes. Like Fever jumped up to my top five perfumes a long time ago, like as soon as I got it and I love that one. This one is different than Fever because to me, Fever is a lot more sexy. It's a lot more seductive, mysterious, syrupy, sweet. Y'all know the dry down of Fever has everything and then some, it has heliotrope, benzoin it has tonka bean um uh, hazelnut coffee like it has so many different things in the dry down this one doesn't have all of that so it's not as sweet to me this one just gives me a nice perfume to wear casually this is nice for evenings out and dinners and things like that but this isn't as sexy as fever is by far like at all but i love the dry down of this like when you first spray this one 
I feel like you definitely get a mix of the orange and the toffee. It smells like hard candies, like hard orange and toffee candies for sure. But in the dry down, it kind of warms up on my skin to make it to where it's more of a like melted toffee, like almost drizzling down. It's very, very syrupy and caramel and sweet but the patchouli wafts in and out of it then. So it's almost like a syrupy, caramel, toffee, patchouli fragrance, which if you don't like patchouli, you're not gonna like this at all. I feel like if you don't like patchouli, you're not gonna like any of the Jimmy Choo's, but I love me some patchouli. I think it's very nice. It grounds the fragrance. It makes it mature. It makes it sophisticated. So I don't have a problem with that. This is a very nice perfume. I'm super happy to have it in my collection, but I thought this was gonna be everything and then some, and it's just, it's just not, what I expected and it's definitely not better than Fever. So don't feel bad that you can't really get your hands on this one unless you find it on eBay or somebody selling it because I definitely think you should try out Fever. Fever is still the better option. Okay and so I guess I'm going to talk about another perfume that I was kind of disappointed in. I mean I wasn't really disappointed in this one. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love this perfume and I'm going to wear it and enjoy it but this perfume I was kind of disappointed in because it doesn't smell like how I thought it would. So this is Amo Ferragamo and every single person I have seen review this scent, talk about this scent, mention this scent, they always say that it smells like an orange creamsicle and I get that, I get where they're going with that, but this to me is more than an orange creamsicle. Like if you say orange creamsicle to me, I'm expecting the scent to be super duper creamy, super duper vanilla-y and like bright orange and this is not that this is this is not that like it's not and it could just be my skin it could just be my nose it could just be my preferences but I expect more creamy and orangeness. This is fruity and creamy, but it's not orange creamsicle to me. So I definitely get the bright and sparkling opening in this one from the black currant and that Campari, like that alcoholic note. But then I also get something very herbal, like something very herbal and aromatic. And if you actually look up this fragrance, one of the actual um, scent profiles of this fragrance is aromatic. And I feel like a lot of people skip over that. Like as soon as they describe this fragrance, they say orange creamsicle and they completely skip over how how complex this scent is they completely skip over that aromaticness that you get because this scent also has rosemary in it it also has mate in it I think if I'm pronouncing that right which is like an herbal like spice or something like and this definitely does smell very herbally to me almost like seasoning like I, it has those notes in there that I feel like a lot of people just disregard and they skip over which I get a lot of that when I smell this this is very unique and it also has rhubarb in it which I've noticed that rhubarb rhubarb gives a really watery fruity scent to a lot of perfumes because I think this is my third perfume that has rhubarb in it and it has a very distinct like watery fruity note like this fragrance does dry down to a vanilla scent it has vanilla in the dry down and it does dry down to more of a vanilla scent but I cannot classify this as an orange creamsicle in my opinion just because to me it's more than that. It's way more than that. And it's different than what I was expecting. So I'm not disappointed in the scent. I'm definitely going to wear it. I definitely have things that I want to pair it with and I like it. But if someone were to ask me what does this fragrance smell like, I would not say orange creamsicle because I don't know. It's something about the mixture of the black currant, the rhubarb, the campari, the rosemary, the mate. It's a mixture of all of those things together that makes this very watery aquatic kind of fresh and it does have a creamy dry down but it's not orange creamsicle so that's all I'm gonna say about that and I'm gonna move on another fragrance that was actually a letdown and a disappointment for me is the Lancome La Nuit Tresor New and I'm not gonna send this fragrance back because I did get it um what's that thing when you put your initials on it I can't think of the word right now, but I did get my initials on this bottle, but this fragrance is not what I was expecting. It's not a bad fragrance, but this is not what I was expecting. If you guys go into buying this perfume and you're expecting it to be like this really tropical, coconut, fruity fragrance, it's not that. I would highly suggest that you go with Alien Goddess or Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess if you want something a little bit more beachy, tropical, coconut, because this to me, I don't get any coconut. This to me smells like a jammy rose fragrance and it has that old perfume house rose that I like. I don't have a problem with that scent because I get that scent in Poison Girl. I get that scent in the Lancome La Nuit Tresor a la Folie. So I don't have a problem with that scent note per se, but 
that's all this smells like. It smells like a jammy old perfume house rose fragrance. I don't get any bergamot. Like, I really, I'm not gonna say I don't get any bergamot because there is something like fresh and bright about this scent, but I'm talking about like distinctly, I don't get any bergamot. I don't distinctly get any coconut. It just smells like jammy rose and some vanilla. So this is highly, highly disappointing because I thought that I was going to be getting just this like tropical beachy coconut fragrance that was going to be like very airy and just light and tropical. I would not wear this to the tropics. It's, it's too heavy for me. I would not wear this to the tropics at all. I would definitely go with something more like Alien Goddess where you can smell that bergamot, you can smell that coconut water and it's just really light and refreshing. This is heavy and will wear you down. So I'm disappointed in this, but I guess I will find other uses for it. It might not be a spring or summer perfume, but it might be a fall and winter perfume. So we shall see. Lancome, La Nuit Trays are new. Not feeling it. And then the very last perfume that I wanna show you guys is one that I came across very unexpectedly. I never seen anybody talk about this. Everyone always talks about Escada Candy Love and I had no idea that this one even existed, but this is Escada Fairy Love. So it's different than the Escada Candy Love, which I also have, that bottle is pink and this one is red and it has a little white heart on it. So. Escada Fairy Love. Um, this is supposed to be a fruity, floral, hazelnut type of scent. I haven't actually worn this one on my skin yet, but I can tell you guys right now, I don't get any hazelnut from this. Maybe the hazelnut is there to give it a little bit of creaminess because this does smell creamy, like when it dries down a little bit. But what I mainly get is just like a fruity, sweet, bright type of scent almost fresh in a way because the jasmine is there but this one to me really smells like it smells like pear it smells like raspberry it smells like orange like i said it's a bright fruity scent and then it has a little bit of creaminess in there which could be the hazelnut but if you're expecting this to be like super creamy nutty almondy hazelnut it's not that or like a hazelnut spread or something it's not that you're not gonna get any like super sweet smooth creaminess out of this one you're just gonna get like something there like something slightly there that's creamy but i like i said i haven't worn this on my skin to actually get the full dry down on my skin to see if something more milky creamy hazelnut comes out but just smelling it from the dry down on the bottle is definitely giving like super bright fruity fresh jasmine and then a little bit of smoothness but i like it nonetheless I definitely think that the original Candy Love is sweeter than this one, because y'all know that one is like candy apple, vanilla, it has some rose in there as well. Very, very pretty. It's a very, very pretty fragrance, and I think this one is pretty too, but that one is a lot sweeter. This one is a lot more bright and like refreshing almost. So I would definitely wear this one in the spring and summer, and maybe like going into the start of fall, but then that's it. I don't see myself wearing this anytime past like that very beginning, early stages of fall. But it is a really nice perfume and I'm happy to have it. I actually have the 100 ml bottle of this one and then in my Candy Love, I only have the 50 ml. So I was happy to get this one. It wasn't super, super cheap. Like I think I paid like $20 for my Candy Love and I got that one from Kohl's. This one ran me about $50. So I'm not really sure why there's a price difference with this one, but this one has also been discontinued as well. I don't think you can find this one at Kohl's or anything like that. But I do think that it's a really, really nice perfume and I'm happy to have it in my collection. So those are all of the fragrances that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I'm pretty happy overall with the perfumes that I got. There's only those two that kind of weren't what I was expecting, but I'm pretty sure that I will find a use for them. And then if not, I guess they will have to find a new home if I just really, really can't get with them, but I doubt it. Cause the Amo Ferragamo, like I said, I'm not super disappointed in this one to the point where I don't like it. It's just not orange creamsicle like everyone says in my opinion and then the Lancome is not a tropical coconut scent like everyone says either so yeah I will have to keep testing these out and wearing them and I will let you guys know but I hope y'all enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes if you did you already know go ahead and give it a big thumbs up leave me a comment down below letting me know if you enjoyed it if you're new you should definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button join the fragrance and beauty army as well as that bell notification so that you can be notified every single time that I upload a video and I'll see you guys in my next one peace